For thousands of years, when my people looked south, they saw only a wall of ice where lonely crows perched. The Nealers had stolen our horizon when our tools shattered against frozen rock, or our boats capsized in rough seas, or bears and shadow cats snatched our game. We cursed the soft men of the green lands beyond the wall. We cursed, and we envied. Huddled around our fires, we told tales of how the southerners lived, how their stone houses touched the clouds and their bellies touched the ground, how their women fainted at a sign of blood and wouldn't knife a man even when he slept, how they wouldn't miss a few swords or rings or daughters. But now we've seen the real South, and we have to admit, we're disappointed. Southerners live life bent over, in the fields, in courts, in bed. They drink too little beer and they eat too many plants. In the North, a man's worth is in his hands and his stories, not his fancy name and fancy talk. With good steel, a man can hunt, kill and live. What can a man do with gold, except shine? But what should I expect from a people who all want to sit on the iron chair? A waste of good metal. You can make better seats, I've used them. How am I supposed to get comfortable on a bunch of swords? Ah, now I see why all your queens are fighting over it. Maybe your southern asses are soft enough to take it, but give me a proper seat any day. Or a proper southern ass. As long as it isn't in the south. From what I hear, King's Landing is even hotter and madder than Winterfell, full of oath-breakers, rich shits, and tiny women. They'll kneel to anyone with an army, or gold, or special blood. Nobody can tell me if it's more red, or less red, or what. Maybe it's purple. If the Dragon Queen wants a bunch of kneelers to be stumping along after her, she can have them. But my people are right enough. The dead are gone from the north, but the south is full of them. You just can't tell the difference.